x-axis. Then I compute the average of my y-axis. Then I compute something called x i minus x bar, right, which is equal to x i minus x bar, but this x bar is going to be constant for all the cells. Make it this. Here you have y i minus y bar is equal to y i minus y bar times 4. And then what we do is we take the square of this guy for x x. We're multiplying this xi minus xb to get x, xi minus xb to the square power. The second thing. We compute xy, which will be the multiplication of the, of the dependent and independent variable. So it'd be this times this. Take its averages. If you sum all them, right? Sorry? If you sum all them, all of them, right? Remember that you can oh, multiply oh, yeah. n by n and you get sxy and sxx. Mm -hmm. Did you do it again? xx and xy, sorry. So you can call it xsx or sx, or actually it's xx. What, I, what you do is you multiply this guy with itself, right? I remember that we have an expression that beta one is equal to the sum of xi minus x bar, x the mean of the x's, times yi minus the mean of the y's over the sum of xi minus x bar times xi minus x bar. Remember, so I'm just doing little steps in order to compute the relationship that we got. Once we got that, we compute the average or the sum, but let's type on the average. Of all these guys. All these guys. And finally, we know that beta zero, beta one also, is gonna be equal to this ratio. S X Y over S X X. Right. Now we know that beta zero is going to be equal to the average of my Y's. Minus beta times the average of So you can compute now your errors. What are going to be your errors? Your, or better yet, I'll be my y fit. My y fit is going to be equal to whatever my linear prediction is. So it's going to be beta zero f4 plus beta one times. We fix it. Huh? Times. My schooling. Okay. Let me show you. B, C, D. Yeah, we 
we can compute the errors <coughs> if the error is greater, which will be equal to what my actual value of y is, which is logarithm of wages, minus my fitted value of y. Then we have a fitted square, which will be the square of this guy. Let's see. So look at this. Remember one of the one of the first results of our OLS? We have it that by ifit, this is my errors summed across all my observations. It was gonna be something, it was gonna be zero. Look at this, this guy is really close to zero. To the minus three. What else do we have? We have e fitted. So perhaps we have we can compute here my MRRS, which is equal to the sum of all these guys. We can compute the variance of my y's, which will be equal to yi minus y bar, which is this guy, and then we elevate it to the square power. So my R squared is going to be equal to 1 minus this guy over this, which is really good. You're going to say, well, this is, this is, I mean, you must know it, or you, you, you should know every step of that way, or better yet, why do you want to do it? If, Excel has already a, a program. So you go to data, the data analysis, you pick up regression, you can select input of y, input of y is logarithm of wages. You can even select it with, with a little tab that says logarithm of wages. And input of x, you compute the years of schooling. You say where you want your results to start. You start in M1. You select that it's going to have labels because you can, you, you included the labels. And sorry, you can affect residuals also. You can you can you can do many things. You can put the residuals. They can give you the plots also. You can put all that. And they give you, uh, and in the results you're gonna give, you're gonna have something called the alpha, the summary alpha. And look at this, the R squared is 20%, which is basically what we computed. We have that the coefficient is equal to 9.07 beta zero, that is true, and beta one is 2.44. Now these guys. For example, what can you tell me about schooling? Well, okay, let, let, let's, read, let's read all the table. We have 30 observations. We have 29. I we have 30. Yeah, we have 30 observations. Oh, because it's, okay. So I have 30 observations, but I have two betas, right? So the beta zero, it's, 
it takes one of the uh, uh, of the observation, and I have the regression to be bet over beta one of all of, of, of my of my characteristics. So you're going to have one here. The residual is going to be 28. In total, summing like the, in, in the analysis of the variance, ANOVA means analysis of variance. The total, if you add one, must give you the result of how many observations you have, which is, it's okay. This is a, for the analysis test that all, all your beta one and beta zeros are equal to zero. So right now you don't want to take into consideration this, this analysis. You want to take into consideration this analysis, which for example, it tells you the beta zero, the intercept, the beta zero, is giving you a result of 9.07. But look at this, at its lower boundary and upper boundary with 95%. What do you see here? It encompasses the zero. It encompasses the zero. You can even see it in your online. <laughs> If you go to probability with a T student, a T distribution, you put degrees of freedom to be 25. Oh, no, no, this one is going to be 28. Because we have two beta estimators and we have 30 observations, so it's 30 minus 2. 30, how many beta do we have? We have two. But the serum beta one. We diminish that over the number of observations. That is 28. That will give us 2.048. That is my t value. Following this result, I just have to add beta low or beta zero low and beta zero high. I just have to take the intercept coefficient minus the t student that I have here. 2.048, 2.048. And we multiply it by the standard error that we have here. That is giving me 2.85. The, 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 the mistake here, it must be a calculation error. But I mean, it's, it's basically this. 2.5, 2.85. And we do the same exact thing. standard error, we get the exact same result, 21.01 in the uh, little discrepancy here. So you, you start realizing that, I mean, they give you a lot of information that it's redundant. What the t-statistic is giving you is where, where in the t-distribution that beta is going to be. If it's gonna be above 95% or, 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 or higher than 95%, it's telling you by the, by the, by the, by the upper 95% and lower 95% intervals. The p-value, the p-value is something very interesting. Either people are gonna tell you the standard deviation, if you read studies, they're gonna give you either the standard deviation with the beta, they're gonna put, or they're gonna put a little star if it's like, if it's one percent uh, as strict, two stars if it's five percent strict, and ten percent if it's three three stars strict. Or they can give you the p-value of the of the of the coefficient. What the p-value is telling you is how strict do you have to be, or how how this alpha, this level of strictness. How much does it have to be in order for you to reject the hypothesis that it, uh, that that that, that uh, beta is equal to zero? So you have to be you have to take into consideration an alpha or a a, 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 a significant level of thirteen percent in order for you to accept that the beta is going to be positive. So I mean thirteen percent that's a lot. So you don't want that. And. For schooling, for example, for schooling we have that it's it's one person, so but it's 0 0.012. So look what this means. Means that it means that 
if I want to put a, a value, a p-value, if I want to put an alpha, a significance uh, level of 5%, then I can accept it because it needs to be at least point, it needs to be at least 1.20% in order for me to, 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 to be in the board. But if I want to be like a medical consultant and they tell me to, uh, to have my results to a level of 1%, I cannot reject the hypothesis that, the, uh, that my beta, that this cooling coefficient can be zero. So this is not a great result. I mean, it's telling us the inter intercept, it's, it's I mean, uh, I, have, I cannot say that that intercept is gonna be zero. It's gonna be different than zero. I mean, it can be zero. And this cooling is telling me well, if I have five percent, you can say it's positive. It can be between. I mean, it, it, it can be. It, it, it is two point forty four via the OLS. And if I have a, a significance, a, a significance of five percent, or I'm studying under the uh, under a significance of five percent, I can say okay, it's positive. But if I want to be more strict, I cannot reject that that value can be zero. So it's not a. And, and see that, that the R squared, the R squared is 20%. It's, it's a horrible regression. If you create theta, logarithm, uh, no schooling, and logarithm wages. Look what it's, I mean, you can see that it's it's not a great result. I mean, yes, it looks like something, a repositive relationship, but yeah, it doesn't look that well. I mean, it, it, it can be, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't give me a, a good result. So, we can get more data. For example, the mental regression this is like a very simple Mincer regression. But what the Mincer regression tells us, or what Mincer says, or the conclusion of Mincer, is that this H can be decomposed into more things. It can be decomposed into, yes, your 